the shift? Are you coming for the shift with us? Yeah. Welcome back to the shift. Stairs here. Back in Dolphin's Barn. Katie's back in New York, and we got a fun episode coming up for you. Since since I talked to you last, I've been to New York and back, and uh, myself and Katie got to record a lot of episodes. We've got some great stuff coming up for you over the next while. This ep, true to our word, is a review of uh, the two sex toys that Shauna from our last episode, sexshopper.ie, gave us to review. Katie reviewing her first ever vibrator and me reviewing the spinner uh, that we mentioned on the last episode. Uh, So we start with that review, which uh, we recorded in a car. I was dropping Sean, I was dropping Katie home to her place in Brooklyn. So you'll be, be aware that it's the sound of sound of car that you're hearing and a subway overhead because we're driving onto the J train in Brooklyn and then we have a great chat with Cullum Terrell, who's an Irish comic based in New York. And I just thought it'd be great to have a guy on. We haven't had a guy yet. Uh, so I thought that'd be nice to change it up. And he was good fun. So enjoy that. And then, man, we have so much else coming up. I mean, I could have put all this stuff together and had like a two-hour episode because we have tons of feedback about our listeners' stories about sex toys. But we'll save that for the next ep. And... Uh, Anyway, I'll talk to you after the episode. So for now, here's a review of the sex toys that Shona gave us last week and then a great chat with Colm Terrell. Okay. Okay. I'm Des Bishop. That's my impression of you. Do it, do it, do it. Like just as if as if the music has just finished, you know. I'm Welcome Des. to... No, come on. I'm oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the shift. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay, come in. Hi, welcome to the no, shift. No, no. Oh, sorry. I thought, I thought you were going to do me. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. Okay. Hi, I'm Des Bishop. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a sexy voice. <laughs> <laughs> Making all the ladies wet. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was so inappropriate. <laughs> it's fine. No problem with the wetness. Sex podcast. So, uh, we're actually driving down Broadway, but not the Broadway that people have in their heads. It's a Broadway in Brooklyn. Yeah. Underneath the uh, underneath the J train. Respect. I'm, I'm driving. I'm driving Katie home after uh, she had a spot in New York Comedy Club. I had a spot in the Comedy Cellar, and uh, we. Um, well, I'm going back to. I'm actually. I'm leaving soon, and we've been doing. We've been doing a hell of a lot of recording. We have. Oh my gosh. I've never talked so much in my life and I'm a talker, so yeah. Can you handle it? I can handle it. This I'm is a the, little tired though. This is the podcasting life. Yeah. I'm like saving all my talking there just for podcasts and my social life is That's just right. go to when, shit. <laughs> when you're having a conversation with somebody you're like, you know what? This is too good. <laughs> I, I can't waste it on this I can't waste it on this unrecorded moment in my life. Well, so we did the podcast yesterday and today, and then when I went to New York Comedy Club, I had to go sit in the corner for a second and not talk to people, which is very not like me. But I was just like, I guess kind of have a conversation. <laughs> it's just well, like you know, you've been. You, 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 it's more than just the talking. I mean, you you let, let's just even though it'll probably screw up the the chronological myth of uh, our podcast, just to explain to people the amount of time that has passed. Uh, Thursday night, Katie flew to Ireland. Friday morning, she arrived. She did Friday and Saturday night in Vicar Street. We recorded the episode with Shauna on Saturday afternoon. Uh, and then Saturday night, obviously, she did the show. Sunday afternoon, she flew back to New York. And today is Tuesday night. Yeah, and we did. So we did the podcast. We went up upstate New York on Monday, and then we did the podcast today. And we did two episodes today, and now we're doing technically a third episode. Yeah. So there's been a lot going on. A lot. You know, I don't like to ruin the magic of the of the podcast, but weirdly, what you're hearing is immediately after the Shauna episode. So to you guys, nothing has happened in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. So I hope we haven't. I hope we haven't ruined it for you. But this. This uh, this particular section is very important because this is uh, when we review the 
two sex toys that Shauna gave to us. And we also had to wait to, to do it. We had to wait for the review till I actually used the sex toy. I guess I was a little bit more slow. <laughs> to the well, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I used it uh, that night, actually. Did you? Well, I was at my cousin's. Then I came home from um, America and I had a man. So I didn't need to do it. <laughs> and then then it was the next day yeah yeah so but it wasn't a case of needing it was a case of having to do oh yeah finding the time to squish well this was a chore time. yeah it was well it this was. was a this was a no i mean like this was a this was an assignment yeah like and this wasn't a case of needing do you know like so i did it this morning i forgot about i kind of just forgot as well and then Des i t- had to remind you like three Des times t- play with <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, text Eddie, to you need to, you need to play with this okay we need to get this done will you use that thing <laughs> <laughs> well, because I wanted to talk about it together before I left. <laughs> no, I didn't know. And then I was like, fuck. So anyway, I went into my bag. I took it out. And I'm um, sure the battery had gone. I guess I must have had it on in my bag or something. And then I had to charge it up. And my roommates were home because they don't work during the day. And so I put on my uh, the heater in my room so that would dr- drown out the noise. So they don't got very hot in my room. There was, yeah, and but I you're bu- gonna, just, just for future reference, you can put on white noise on your phone. Oh wow! You see, I didn't even know that because I didn't want to put on music because I didn't want to wake them up. I didn't want it to be too loud, and I knew I needed to get this done. And then I put down a towel and everything on my bed. It was very put clinical. down a towel. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think you're going to squirt? Um, well, I knew I'd probably come a little, and uh, I was yeah. I was like, what if I did squirt? And then secondly, I just did make, I just put those sheets on, and I couldn't be arsed putting getting new clean sheets. Oh, you know, I have so. a whole routine about Irish ladies and the clean sheets. Oh, it's lovely. You know, I didn't want it to be ruined by uh, you know, even if it was only a little bit of cum. I got really turned off a man once, an older man who I went over to his house a few times, and then. Um, there was a hole in the sheet each time and then I was like look would you not kind of just change your sheets and he was like these are the only sheets I own <laughs> really I can't be with you no. can't I was like there's a bloody sh- there was a sheet store just a couple of blocks down and like one of those cheap ones that has everything you know like home improve I don't know um, but I will say this so we got the sex toys I couldn't believe there was a that she brought a man toy so that was great it looked fun but um, mine why well, I brought it, I had to bring it back to America and um, my bags going through, what's it called? TSA? They took my bag to look through it. There was something in it and I fucking... Oh, in Dublin? I fucking had a heart attack, I thought. W- when you were in Dublin but you were at the American... Dublin, I'm going through... This is before the pre-clearance in America and this is actually in the very first TSA, you know, you've said goodbye to your family and it's emotional Then you walk Oh through. no, you just mean, yeah, through security. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because TSA is American, you know. Oh, sorry, true security. Because I also had to go through the USA one. But anyway, the first one in Dublin, um, yeah, they my my bag stopped. It was the only one that stopped. And then they took my stuff out. And then they went through my jacket. And I thought, oh, my God, they're going to go into my bag. They're going to go into my bag. And it's the vibrator. That's what it is. And and then I was like, crap, I can't be sh- I can't be sh- ashamed. I host a sex podcast. I'm going to have to own up to it and be like, yes, I'm going to use that later. Um, but thankfully, do you know, uh, it wasn't the vibrator. It wasn't the vibrator. It was actually something in my jacket. So then they didn't end up going into my bag. Thank God. So, um, yeah, no, then I, my bag got searched then as well through the pre-clearance. But again, it didn't. So there was two false <laughs> vibrating false alarms. But but you think actually somehow your vibrator was on the whole time? It mo- I think it was on because Sean impressed it on and it worked. And then when I came back this and the battery was gone, so then I had to charge it up. I was all committed. I was all ready. Had my underwear off and everything ready to go. And then the battery wasn't working, so I had to plug it in and go make a cup of tea. Come back, try and think of something that turns me on, and back to it. All right, yeah. That's why you really need to introduce porn in your life. Because it doesn't require you to use your brain. Um, but anyway, let's not get distracted. Mm-hmm. That's my fault. I apologize. And so, so you... So, you need to do a review. I'll do a review. Okay, right. Um, and be honest. Okay. Well, it was so nice to get it. But I think... So, I got this little rabbit ears... And it's quite gentle on my clit that I didn't actually realise. I guess when I use my hand, I'm actually quite forceful. So it helped for st- stimulating it, getting it quicker. Because my hand hurts sometimes, my hand gets tired. So it actually helped with that. But I wasn't going to come from it super hard. Like I used it for a little bit and then my hand. And I was like, oh, this is great. But 
yeah, I think I would need something a bit harder, actually, which is good to learn, I guess. Yeah, I've it's been good to learn. I mean, I think she brought you something quite gentle because, I, you know, it was your first sex toy experience. Yeah, but I guess because I haven't been using sex toys, I've built up a good muscle there in my arm. <laughs> so. Well, no, I mean, I, I think that, I think she had said that, yeah, which you know, is different great. people like different amounts of vibration slash sensation, right? Yeah, and I think there is a way to make it go faster, and I was trying that. So again, I think I'm happy with it, and I will continue to use it as a pre, so that my arm won't be as tired or cramp up. And, um, you know, maybe I'll figure out a way, a place to put it. But yeah, you know, I, I used it for quite some time this morning, so... That's the subway in case anybody's listening. Subway is heckling me. Well, Subway is getting involved in, in Katie's It's like, oh, do you like review. the noise of this now? Do you get turned on by these... Now, <laughs> let me ask you this. Uh, did you... Was there an element of excitement of just, I'm using a sex toy? Absolutely. Actually, to, Well, actually, to be honest, I felt a bit guilty for a second, which is funny. I can't believe that came over oh, me. Oh, you felt guilty mm-hmm. about using it? I did, which is, I guess, I... I Again, probably comes back to what I heard about sex toys when I was younger. Um, but yeah, I that felt there's a seediness to them. Mm-hmm. I felt I felt like a little low for a second, like a little sadness. But then I got over that pretty quickly once I put it on my clit, and I was like, "This is fun." Um, what's your favorite? What's your favorite left to take off of Broadway? Oh, I've no idea. I always just go wherever they're bringing me. Oh, so you don't actually know how to get home? No, well, no. But you live on Madison Street, so I get. Oh, sorry, I gave away your, your street there, but I, that's not really much. If you want to kill me. But uh, I guess I'll take a turn on your street. Yeah. <laughs> I guess great. if I was going to pick a street, I'd pick your <laughs> yeah. street to turn on, you know? I thought you were going, you go, what's your favorite left? And I thought you were talking about, like, w- you know, when you're, like, touching yourself. And I was like, well, I do like it to the left, actually. <laughs> so uh, before I give my review of, of my sex toy, we're in Bushwick, everybody, just in case you're wondering. Katie's super cool. She's living in the eastern end of Bushwick. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Very cool. Yeah, she's like, she's just uh, way cooler than me. I live in the Lower East Side, which was cool about 15 years ago, you know? So we're outside Katie's now. Anyway, I, I'm giving the review of uh, this Japanese company's product. Sadly, I, I can't remember the name, but... People that listened to the previous episode will know the name of the thing. It was a masturbation sleeve, as uh, as Shauna said. And, uh, I mean, we have a video of it, so I don't know if people saw the video. But it, it, it's kind of like, um, what do we say? It was like the water snake. Yeah. You know, that toy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's made out of whatever it's made out of, kind of like a soft uh, sensation. And uh, y- y- you put it over your, your, your dick. And uh, it's, I, I guess it's meant to sort of give you a, a more intense masturbation experience. Now, number one, uh, you need a ton of lube for it. Uh, you know, uh, otherwise it's actually quite, it's a, like a little painful uh, with, without like a ton of lube. Um, so at the start, I was kind of like, actually to <laughs> You you need so much you need lube just to get it on you. If you don't have the lube, it gets air locked so you can't actually get it over your dick. Oof. It's not sore. It's just you can't it just won't go over. Oh, okay. You know, like it, it just fills up with air. You, you know? So if 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 anyone ever uses these masturbation sleeves, you really you can't have enough lube. That's all that's all I can say about that. So when I when I because I had put lube on it, you know, but just not enough. Actually, what happened was she there was a sachet of lube that she gave me with it, mm. or it came with it, and uh, I actually just kind of like squirted it into the thing, thinking like <laughs> that would you know that once we got going it'd be full of lube, but uh, you know it just it just wasn't enough lube. So then I had to go and uh, source more lubricant. And anyway, when I, when I finally figured out that I need you know th- that there was a, like a lot of lube necessary. Uh, it's quite an interesting sensation because you, it once it gets on your dick, when you pull it up, the the these coils that are on it, which she mentioned, which is essentially like a slinky within inside this thing, when you when you pull up, there's a certain amount of air locking that goes on, and then the sort of coils kind of like tighten around your penis. So I guess it gives it like a kind of a, you know, it gives it like a sort of tight canal sensation, but. Uh, 
it, you know, it it's fine as a sensation, but you know, you you stuck your finger and you're like, oh my god, it's the inside of my vagina. <laughs> like it didn't it didn't really feel like. A, yeah, I also don't really know what the inside of my vagina feels like, so I guess that was an inaccurate. That was an assumption. That was an you assumption. You made an assumption that it feels like the inside of your vagina. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it it it, it, was, it was fine. I can't really say whether it's 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 preferred to just like a normal sort of jerk off session. Uh, it's certainly why I asked you in your situation: Were you excited, or was it a turn on to use it? I mean, it was there was an excitement to sort of like trying this out and uh weirdly enough i actually because sort of shauna was on the was on the podcast and she was like so open about all these toys and that she brought this man toy uh i had left it out actually on the table uh (laughs) when i went off to vicar street and i I said to aiden i was like if you get home before me just so you know there's a fake vagina (laughs) on the kitchen table (laughs) that's that's mine (laughs) in case you're wondering uh but there was kind of like a I actually found the opposite to you in terms of the guilt thing. I actually found like oh, a great freedom to it, which is just like, well, you know, I, I'm doing this because it's it's for the podcast and it's great. And this is just a thing that we do now. We try out sex toys. Um, but as a as an ex, as an experience, I actually well, I'm going to have to I mean, I left the next day, so I'm going to have to uh, going to have to give it another go with like m- more lube, basically, because I feel like. It took me too long to realize that the extra lubricant was necessary and that perhaps, um, yeah, perhaps I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, give it, you know, give it enough of a shot. Do you think it would feel differently for a guy who's not circum or is circum? I, 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 I can't. I wonder I can't though, speak about a thing that I've never, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I can't, I don't think so because, the, you, you know, the the skin's back when you're erect anyway. Oh, okay. You know, so I don't I don't I don't think True. I don't think it it's it's really a thing. But it, I have to say, it it's it's rough enough. You know, like yeah. it's 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 stronger than I expected. Like it it fucking it it really grabs you. You know, like it it totally grabs you. That's why I think it's really important to to lube lube up, lube up like crazy. So you know? it's like um, and more of an investment then though to have to get. But do you guys use lube anyway for like jerking off? Well, I don't, but I do, you know, non uh, guys that are circumcised uh can be more of a fan of the lube. No. Yeah, that's I didn't know anyway. That's like yeah, they need more lube over here. Yeah, when when you're circumcised, they tend to go more for the lube. Yeah. You they, know? They like it to spit on your hand. Yeah, all that. I yeah. Didn't know. Well, I like I mean, I I I I made I mentioned that. I don't know if you remember one of the early eps about encountering situations where American girls didn't really know what to do with like an uncircumcised penis. Yeah, yeah like a, you know, you don't need lube. In general, you don't need lube as much when you're when you're when you're not circumcised. But for this thing, you definitely need a ton of lube, and that has nothing to do with your your foreskin or or not having foreskin. It's just it just won't it won't work properly. It's essential, but in fairness, it comes with lube, so it's letting you know that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's not a self-lubricating fake vagina. You can't talk dirty to it and get it. Have, get, get it, yeah, get it Get lube. a little <laughs> moist, you know? So our chat with Colm is actually happening on 6th Avenue on the corner of Waverly Place and 6th Avenue in my mom's car. Uh, and it was just a handy place to record. Um, and uh, we come sort of mid-chat as we were messing around a bit at the start we jump in mid-chat to talk to uh Colum about his experience of coming over here and uh was there a difference with the american ladies so in terms of uh so w- so when you came to the states y- you didn't find any difference at all at all um, like you didn't find any difference between american women I irish women I, I found the biggest difference was like the dating scene like it, it it's a thing of like dating and men and women over here in new york they they always have like multiple sort of like dating they're 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 dating different people and they'll go on a date with like four or five they're all they're looking for they're testing out the waters you know they they they, they cast a wide net yeah I'd over agree. here whereas in ireland yeah. it seems like if you're dating one person like you're lucky to even get that far of even calling it dating yeah Ireland's kind of like you just sort of end up 
riding each other or sleeping with each other or whatever and then slowly but sure you're like ah sure maybe and then next thing you know you're you're together whereas over here it's all like this is a date we are dating and I'm also by the way dating four other people yeah. so you know just so you know yeah although I don't do th- people don't discuss it so much but there's definitely a thing of there's a period of time within your getting to know somebody where it's completely acceptable to go out on dates with other people yeah 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 they're, they're, they, they seem to always be juggling a couple of people, though, from my experience. Do you find um, American women more vocal about what they want sexually compared to when you were back home in Ireland? Did you, Or did you find that the women you were hooking up with on nights out like that would be like, you know, move this here and do what you want? Did you, do you find there's a difference? Um, I feel like I only became for, more vocal once I learned that off my friends over here. or But it could have been just growing up as well, I don't know. Yeah, th- yeah definitely I think American women would be much more like this is what I like or they'll definitely tell you if you're shit <laughs> <laughs> tell you that much is that right yeah they'll be like what what is that do, do other people like that that's oh. not a, that's not a thing and I'm like that oh yeah well really my well. first girlfriend 10 years ago liked it and that's the technique <laughs> I've kept ever since so <laughs> but do you listen to her or do you get offended hmm do no I listen I listen yeah yeah no, I'm not like you, you adapt yeah yeah well um I'm, I'm in a steady relationship now and I have been for a few years but like so I, I hope I'm doing it as good as I can. <laughs> I hope I've peaked. <laughs> Unless this is our opportunity now to go, listen, I was listening to the podcast. You, uh, yeah. you, to be honest, you have been pretty shit now. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're very much pushing for Irish women to be more like that. To sort of yeah, say, exactly. To say what they like. Yeah, but I remember years ago, I started saying, like, what do you like? like and those Irish girls would be like, no one's ever asked me that before. Like, mm-hmm. And then they'd say some mad shit, you know? Well, Which I thought was crazy at the time, you know? I mean, I remember a girl was like, no one's ever asked me for that before. I was like, I want you to uh, like wrestle me and call me a slut. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I swear, I swear. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget this girl. Yeah. She wanted you to wrestle her. Well, like she wanted me to like arm bar her, put her arms behind her back when when going from behind, you know, so that her face was kind of mo- like her arms are behind her yeah. handcuffed style, and then her face would be mushed into. And then I kept having to call her a slut. Wow. Really? So, but she was like, no one's ever asked me that before. I don't even know why I became suddenly just like, hey, what do you like? Because <laughs> I've got two things I can do. <laughs> <laughs> don't say anything too complicated. <laughs> That's great because if someone had asked me, if someone had asked me back in Ireland, what do you like? I wouldn't have had a fucking clue. You know, in it. <laughs> Put uh, it in there. Yeah. <laughs> but Katie, I had said that on one of the early apps that every now and then I get surprised by an Irish girl where you discuss it and it's, yeah. you're shocked. You know, you, you yeah. they seem quite timid and then you're shocked by Oh what, yeah, what they come the out Irish with. guy would be like, I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you know, dress up as Zorro, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you're like, what? No, no, no one's <laughs> ever asked me before. But uh, here's a extremely specific thing. <laughs> put, ah. your, put my hands behind my back, smush my head <laughs> into the pillow, and call me a slut. I don't know where I picked that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, well, I, I'm guessing I might like this. I don't know. I don't know where. Now that we're saying it, I'm like remembering stuff, and I do actually remember a boyfriend asking, "Is there anything you'd like to try?" And I said, "Yeah, tie me up." Really? Yeah, sorry. So I forgot that I did do that. I got him to tie me up with his with his work tie. All right, two yeah. hands in the in two the two hands on the bed uh, frame, and yeah, it was fun. All right, but well, I've never explored have, more of that. You gotta have a, a workable bed frame. That's the problem. You yeah. need to have those bars. Yeah, I don't even know where I had seen that as well, or where that came from. And Fifty Shades. I never, I, I, I didn't get past chapter eight on that, but it might have been that. It <laughs> might have been that. Movie? I know, but I was reading the book when I was seeing him, so it could have been, you know. But I could have been that. But when she, she started to irritate me, and I threw her out. Um, her, 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 what she wanted off him, I was like, oh, I can't relate to this. You don't so, like the dominant. I don't like. I didn't mind. It's not the dominant. It's just that he was being an annoying arsehole, and I was like, I wouldn't put up with him. That's funny, you know, <laughs> I've, I've discussed tying up so many times with people and I've never tied anybody up and I've never been tied up. But yeah. I've also never sort of, uh, I, I, I've never really, I'm distracted by the fact that some woman is really dealing with a lot of garbage uh, right outside our car. <laughs> it's just, uh, just a very New York moment. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to discuss that I've never tied up a woman and some fucking lunatic is like going hard at the garbage. And she doesn't look like... Mm. She doesn't look like somebody who should be at the garbage, but then you can't judge a book by its cover, you know? No, no she's taking that home. She's with one of the uh, yeah. ladies that recycles, isn't it? Yeah, I know, yeah, but she uh, she doesn't fit the bill. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I don't want to make... I know you're alluding to I, I don't want to make any judgments, but... <laughs> anyway, I've, I've never <laughs> actually... I've never done the, the tying up thing. I, you know, I've discussed it with women before, but I've, I, I've never done it. You know, no. that's something I really have to try. I mean, I, I, sir, I don't have a desire to be tied up, but you liked it, did you? Yeah, there was something like that release of, con- like I trusted him, but there was a, that release of control where it's just like, ah, oh, I can just, 
you know, you, yeah, you just do what you want. And he obviously wasn't going to do anything too wild, so there was that say that. Yeah, it's like here now. I'm going to do exactly what I normally do, but you're not going to be able to not stop me like you <laughs> normally do. <laughs> you're not going to you're not going to be able to not stop me, which you never do anyway. So I, this is here we go. But no, I'm I'm kidding. Of course, I can see the I can see the attraction in it, you know. But I've never done it. Yeah, yeah, the dominance thing. But so it's very. But w- could you see yourself tying up a guy, Katie? No, I think I like. You can't have a guy who's submissive. Uh, you can't date a submissive guy. Is that sort of uh, seems to be. You can try things out with a submissive guy, but you don't want to date someone. I really like manly men. Yeah, manly men. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. I don't want to be beaten, but I want to like. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like. You know where they lift me up and push me against the wall, but not where it and hurts. The, and so there and has the, to be and the stubble sort of grates your cheeks, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, Love not that. Stubble. I mean, uh, I've never thought about a guy like that, but that is the type of guy I'd go for if I was to swing that way. Yeah. Nice. But you, nice you, rugged you, man. You seem to be quite familiar with the old submissive and dominant and stuff like that. Is that something that floats your boat? Yeah, I'd be um, maybe uh, a rough, a rough lover. I suppose would be a polite way of saying it. Like just sort of not like crazy, but like I'm definitely more take control and things like that. Um, not so much with my girlfriend at the moment. I don't. I find it hard to uh, sort of rough up my girlfriend because I love her. <laughs> but uh, you know, if it was a, just a random girl at the bar, oh, she'd get a good ride. Oh Jesus! But no. like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But but what you know, if, I don't. What, what if that wasn't her bag though? Wasn't her bag? Oh, like what if she yeah. said like, "Yo, I'm just not into the rough." Oh, well, then I'd stop, Des. I, really? I, I, would I stop roughing up a girl if she asked me not to rough her up? Well, Are well, you asking I, me? I, no, <laughs> yeah, no, I no, would. No, Call no, me a gen- the sex he's asking, would you no, switch it up? No, 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 no. Oh, is that what you meant? Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. I'd just ask me if I'd just uh, do as I please. No, I wouldn't stop the sex. No, no, no. But, You'd um, just back off, but it wouldn't be as you wouldn't be your thing as much, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then I've had girls like... I like I like a bit of choking, but nothing crazy. Oh, I wouldn't. Kate, Katie's not a, not Kate into it. the choking. No. No, 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 no. I can't. I actually don't even really like. I like my neck being kissed, but I don't even really like people touching my neck. I feel I feel uh, more girls like choking than not. No, don't like it. No, and I yeah. I don't know. I've gotten a good like bit of feedback good. from women as well, saying that they don't like choking. They're wondering is that choking an, Amer- an American thing? <laughs> no, like, really. Yeah, yeah. Love a choking. Yeah, um, a girl tried to choke me once, Whee! and I said, it's like, sorry, no, I just can't be doing You're that. You're not anymore. into being choked? No, I, I actually, she kept doing it, and I actually threw her out of my house, <laughs> actually, one night. No, because she wouldn't listen. I was like, listen, I'm just not into that, and then she did it again, and I was like, no, seriously, and then the third time, I was like, right, if you're just not, this is, this isn't going to work, so yeah. she had to leave, unfortunately. Really? So, well, yeah. in fairness, she didn't listen to you. Yeah, yeah in exactly. fairness, yeah, you know I would have I mean? done the same thing, so... No, you have to bloody... No, no you got to know your boundaries there. Yeah, 100%. Folks. I mean, I don't mind doing the choking, but I, I'll, I'll wait to see if a woman's into it. Or I'll... Yeah, you don't... You don't or, or you, sometimes it's just... Uh, a friend of mine taught me this was just just like a good heavy lean on a chest is enough. You know, you don't need to be choking, but like a bit of just a sort of a pressure is enough for them to be like, all right, this sort of feels like dominance without being too scared or whatever the... Yeah. But, but, that's what someone told me. Do you so. know what I don't like? And lads love doing this. Look, a good slap on the arse for <laughs> sex. I find it very distracting. I'm like, you know, you're just. But a lot of women ask for the slap. I hate it. And you're to do, and you're they like, ask you're, for the you're slap, in the they mood. Say slap my ass. I'll never yeah. ask. Yeah, they yeah. All I slap mean, me. I'll only ever slap a woman that asks to be slapped. But you, you get asked quite a bit. You Every don't organically. Guy I've do, you, do you ever go organically? Have you ever gone organically for the slap and then? She's like, "What was that?" And you're like, "Sorry." I, I, when it comes to when it comes to stuff like that, I don't really. I mean, I I'll, I'll have the discussion in advance, or you know, I mean, it, you. I guess if you've if you can see uh, the desire for aggression, I guess I'll I'll, yeah. I'll take the risk. But yeah. it, it would have to be pretty obvious to me. I think all my I've never smacked somebody that was like, "Please don't do that." No. All no, my partners have done either. it, and I've never asked for it. I'm pretty no, really sure a majority of them. Have, have done it? Have, yeah, majority. They're the ones I can remember. Just slapping an arse in there, yeah. yeah. If I remember. Really? I have a nice arse, like, so maybe. <laughs> I don't but know I, what I, th- I think that was, that was a thing with, with guys. Like, they sort of go, right, she wants me to slap her ass, right? But she doesn't want to, like, have to say it, you know? So they're kind of like, 
listen, I'll probably maybe maybe I should try take because you got to try take the lead because you don't. Okay. Would it be okay for me? Let's say my next sexual partner, if he does it, for would it be okay for me to be like? Because I don't want to embarrass them. What if you guys like? I just presume all guys just like don't it. Sm- just say sorry. I don't like that. Yeah. Especially with things yeah. like slapping, it's very acceptable to be like, I'm not into that. Yeah, there's something very like I love. I don't know. Like, I don't like when a woman. I don't like when it. a woman scratches my back too hard. Oh. But yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't say it straight away sometimes because I figure they might be into it. But sometimes I have to be like, "Yo, yeah, easy yeah, on yeah. my back." I usually, honestly, if it's like the first time, I won't say anything. But like, I, I you know, if we, if we're gonna, if we're continuing to have yeah. a sexual relationship, I will say, you know, I'm not, I'm not totally wild about the, uh, the back scratch. Yeah, I don't need no permanent scars, please. Thank you very much. And do you like the back scratching, Colin? A little bit, but again, if they draw blood, that's too much. You yeah, know? because like, it's sore in the shower. It's actually sore in the shower. Then after, yeah, and we got, yeah. I got a bit of. And then someone else sees the scratches on your back and you're well, like no yeah. no I haven't been sleeping uh, around I got a bit of feedback <laughs> <laughs> that's a cheating joke there, <laughs> oh Katie. god well I got a bit of feedback about a guy saying about girls scratching the back and a lot of them will do it to draw blood and then one time he was going to what? work and well they do it too hard because he's got these scary long nails but it, the blood came through his shirt at work at the white shirt so yeah, I'll fit. That yeah. but that is up. common I mean you know if if you were making an argument about saying like oh it's not right that men smack an arse without asking uh, the the opposite would be definitely a lot of women like scratching. Yeah, the back. they do love a good it's scratch. It's good to know because I do, I scratch back as well. So now a you're lot of a lot of back. But my scratching. nails are short though. But I I don't mind I don't mind uh, a, a bit of it. But when it when it's like when it gets to yeah. the moving the skin, I, I do you ever feel though nearly sometimes almost a bit embarrassed to say like listen you're hurting me <laughs> yeah. you know like you kind of go well, listen I, I, always, I always phrase it I'm not into that oh is it mm-hmm. if you don't go that's I go, my safe word Aww. listen I'm, yeah you gotta calm down there yeah I know you're into it and I really want you to enjoy this yeah. but yeah. but but some people like yeah I, obviously in my experience for some women it's like a thing and that even after you say it sometimes they, they kind of aren't even aware that they're doing it like they'll start doing mm. it again they won't even really be paying yeah. attention yeah like yeah. lip biting, I can't stand a lip bite. Oh, someone bites no. your lip? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hate yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Good like point. that either. I hate. I've I've had to do it before as well with people just kissing, going, "No, please." Yeah, 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 yeah. easy on the lip bite. I don't mind. Like, I don't mind a little bit of it, but when they get into that hard thing, it's like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Yeah, yeah. What, like, touched my face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people just forget that you can feel what they're doing. They have no. Yeah, well, boundaries. That, that's with hair pulling as well. I have long hair, and guys love it, and they'll fucking pull the head of hair off me, and I'm like, ah, I need it to stay on my head, if you don't mind. And I yeah, love fair enough. I can imagine that happening a lot. Oh, yeah. they love it. Yeah, and that's another one where and, it's like, and do you find yourself just letting this sort of slide a little bit because you're like, listen, he's into it. I've let a few slide where it didn't hurt, but I was uh, there was a guy who was dating, and he would this, rip is, the head so off. So this me. is what this is like an Irish thing of sort of going, listen. The other person, they're kind of into it. I didn't want to ruin the buzz. <laughs> That's Ameri- not an Irish thing. No? No, what? but he's the, the saying like that we are kind of polite about it, whereas oh, Americans kind of like someone's like slapping your ass and you're going, ah, listen, let him, don't embarrass he's, him, you know? ha- let him have fun. It won't be long. Yeah. It won't be much longer now. Yeah, um, I, I have a funny ass slapping story, actually. All oh, right. tell us. Go on. Long Go on. time ago. In Shannon. I was in a hotel in Shannon. Long time ago. Shout man. out to Shannon. And this girl, this woman I was with uh, told me she likes to be smacked on the ass. And uh, that she likes to be smacked pretty hard. So I was fucking whacking her ass as per request. <laughs> and uh, afterwards, I was like, you, really, you're into that? And she's like, yeah, but not on the same spot every time. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, I, I kept whacking the one spot. So she kind of was like hoping I would sort of move the uh, move this, the landing area around mm-hmm. a little bit. But Yeah, I learned that. By mistake, someone was, in, I was working with some girl and she was giving out about a guy slapping her ass in the same spot. And then I was like, yeah, fuck it. Why, why would he do that? And then I was just, note to self. <laughs> note to <laughs> self. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what a fucking dope, huh? Yeah. yeah, that's why you need to have friends from the opposite sex. <laughs> just to Although like it may be difficult. Try it. <laughs> 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 Recommend it. Yeah, I mean, God. listen, the, the more conversations you have about it, the better it is. Oh, Absolutely. But I have to say that's one thing for sure that I'm not into. I am not into uh, being dominated. No, in I fact, can't. I had this one girl that was clearly into being dominant, which is fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with her being into it. But she was trying to do it on me, and I was just like, I'm sorry, but I, I notice, you know, gives you a lot of pleasure, and I'm really into pleasing you. But I, I, I this is one thing I am just not into. It does nothing for me, and it kind of makes me want to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to be honest. Yeah, right? you go. I'm not gonna laugh in your face if you keep trying to. 
tell me what to do. But how dominant? We does a line, right? I don't want to get gagged and spit on. But um, yeah, what was she doing? You, I you, can't you can aggressively pick, I can't ride me on top, and I'll be like, "All right, go to town." That's not even d- being dominant, though. That's dominant just her, her if turn. She's, if she's mushing your face or something. Oh you know, right, don't do, I do ride on top, but I'm not mushing face. Yeah, but there's Usually a difference between a dom- does a does a difference between a dominant ride on top. Yeah, mine's but not they're dominant. like they're trying to fucking smash you this through the bed. This no. wasn't more. This wasn't about the violence. It was actually about the sort of. Uh, the yeah. commands. Oh yeah, she told. Uh, just, yeah, there was, was no it please was, or thank yous. It, it was just. It was just a certain vibe that she was into, and oh. I, I just oh. had to tell. Her, I was like, listen, you know, I'm I'm really open sexually, but like, that is just off. There, there was orders. Well, was I it? mean, I, yeah. At the end or, of the day, yeah. it's like I'm not into it. But what, what are you gonna do? Like, I can't. Yep. Yeah. You know, you're, you're basically you're turning me off. Like, it's one thing. It's like I'll do anything if you're into it, but I I can't do something that's actually turning me off. No, hundred percent. You know. But that was, she was cool with it. It wasn't like she was like, "Oh well, fuck it. I, 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 I need to. I need you to listen to my commands. I need you to be my slave." She was just like, "All right, let's go neutral." Yeah, I was like, see, "Wrong. Tables good. are turned, bitch. Get on your <laughs> fucking knees." No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Eat from the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's uh, great. You actually kind of sold her on me now. That towards the end, you was like, "Not like she wants me to be a slave." I was like, "Oh, she doesn't sound too bad." <laughs> Bit of slavery. I'd be someone's a slave. But only in a sexual sense. You couldn't have that in a relationship. This is the... I have to well, find... It. No? It's way more common, if you ask me. The slave. The, the, the non-sexual under the thumb. But anyway, I'm only kidding. So, but... but but So, in actual... So, you moved here. So, you obviously got in a relationship quite quickly then, did you? No. No. No, I was, I was here for, like, two and a half years. Single. You were so. Jessica a year and a half, was it? How old yeah. are you? 28. Oh, you guys are the same age. Yeah. Yes. We've known each other yeah, a long time now, I guess. Yeah. So would you say growing well, up that y- y- you were quite open sexually or, you know, like... Me? Did you, yeah, did you yeah, have like the yeah. classic Catholic shame and all that? Um, yes, I did have that instilled from my parents, but f- I was, uh, I don't know, I think my brother exposed me to like porn early on and I've always had like a weird uh, open... Uh, dialogue or something or not a dialogue but you know like I've always talked about sex and um, enjoyed the conversation and like that but I've never I've never felt this Catholic shame that everyone always talks about you know really I mean? not real not with sex no maybe just a, I, 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 sure I wake up sad but not something to do with sex <laughs> that's I don't have a, I don't have a sexual Catholic shame just a life one yes exactly now in the, in the um in the more casual years that you spoke of, yes, your your peak Tinder years, two thousand thirteen. Yes, w- were you having a lot of unprotected sex? Yes, that is one thing, and I talk about it on stage sometimes. This is about Irish women. In my experience, they were they will nine times out of ten have un- unprotected sex, as in just no condom sex. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure they're, most of them are on the pill or whatnot nowadays as well. But I just found I think I think that's the Catholic thing that's passed down because when condoms become legal, 1989 or something around that, mm-hmm. maybe yeah, even I think it was the early 90s. See, but I, I could be wrong. So I feel like there's just something with in, in the Irish psyche of like if you're with a girl and she's like, "Do you have a condom?" and you say no, she goes, "Yeah, that's uh, that, I did my job, so that's yeah. to do it anyway." And I, I do I do remember like when I was growing up there we were more worried about getting like a lot a lot of girls be like, I got on the pedal, we don't need to use condoms now. We never really talked thought about STDs until like I'm over yeah. here, you know. Don't yeah, know STDs are that's a foreign thing, right? Yeah, but I, I do have to say that uh I thought that too over the years going back and forth between Ireland and here. However, I feel that since the IUD came out that unprotected sex has arisen a bit in the United States. Or certainly I've 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 met a few women where it's just like it's not a it's not a hundred percent have to have a condom situation. Yes. Whereas I definitely found maybe even ten years ago, the comparison, you know, it would have been more like Irish women are more casual about condoms. American women are like way more into. It. Plus, there's there's like a there's like a familiarity thing in Ireland, which kind of can be a bit misleading in that people kind of think like, oh, we're, Ar-, you know, we all know each other. Ireland's small. Mm. Sure, they don't have anything. Whereas America's so, so anonymous that the degrees of separation are so much that people feel like, oh, this guy could have anything. He could have been anywhere. Yeah, yeah that's so true. That's such a good point. Because a lot of the time you end up kind of drunk and but also, sleeping with I, your friend. I never really, home. I never came across anyone who had STDs 
in Ireland. But sure, how what do you, you mean know? you never came across anyone who had STDs? How would you know? You know, I'm sure there's lots of them rocking around no, there like riddled. I, no, and they don't know. no, I just I think people who who have admitted it to me the, gro- growing up and stuff like that. Yeah, but it, even in those college. Like, you but no, but even the friends and and friends of friends, mm. normally they would say something. But then over here, uh, I de- I never caught out until I got over here. And they're very open. What did you catch over here? Chlamydia. 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 Yeah. Chlamydia's Chlamydia's Chlamydia is like getting the flu. Fucking I've never gone. It. One Got pill over. You can pray that away. Oh, Chlamydia? Really? No, wash your hands and <laughs> you're good to go. But you also, and you Bit of fairy liquid and you'll be good. I do, you know, I don't know if you're comfortable talking about this, so if you're not, you can just t- tell no, us to I don't edit it out. But, um, you, you tell us about being adopted. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Colm dated a friend of ours who's very vocal about the fact that she has herpes. And did that was that, was that not scary for you? Or what did you kind of think about it? Or did you know, did you look up the statistics before? Or were you like... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that was scary because I never knew anything about it. Because I then, didn't either, yeah. But she was. Oh, she told you. She yeah. Disclosed? Did she talk about it on yeah, stage? Yeah, no, she told... Yeah, yeah, but I knew... I, yeah, she told me. She told me before I was dating... When we went on a date or something, she goes, just so you know, I have herpes. And I was like, yeah. A friend of mine rang and told me before the date, actually. <laughs> so I actually got... <laughs> I, had, I had my scouts out. So <laughs> a guy might rang me and he goes, yo, yo, before this date, just I need you to know. He goes, I couldn't rest it on my conscience. He goes, she has herpes. I was like, no way. But she's vocal about it anyway. So, do you know, everybody, like, she's she, she's a comedian who talks about it on stage and has jokes about it, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is with herpes. But that's good because, yeah. The more, Sorry, you, re- the, the more you research herpes, the chances of catching it are, are sort of fluky low, especially if the person who has it knows they have it and is taking medication to prevent the flare up and things like that. And then also I've had cold sores over the years. So, so you've got the you've got the simplex one. Yeah, I've got like a little bit of a build I've a I've already got something, so kind of built up a better natural defense, I think. I don't That's what they yeah. say, but they, yeah, there's no there's no it's hard to say how much that does uh give you a bit of immunity. Ooh, but I they d- do say that it gives you a, a, a small bit of immunity. I yes, ninety percent of people have the herpes simplex one. I th- I felt that it was very common in Ireland. No, I've never growing had up co- in kiddie discos or whatnot. Yeah, but y- y- if you've never had a cold sore, it does not mean that you don't have a herpes simplex one. Not not, not that mm. I'm saying that you have it, Katie, but uh, th- the larger amount of people in the world have the 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 cold sore virus. Oh yeah, and sure, exactly. Like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Well, no, um, that's yeah, but, that's but not it starts a thing a, at all. Y- and same with herpes. Once you get your first initial couple of flare outs, it starts to fade more and more. I remember get, getting lots of cold sores on this kid. Now I haven't had one maybe in about four years. So they, I think they slowly, each time your body gets better and better. Yeah. At, uh, and and different it. people, like it, it, it actually varies between people in terms of how often things flare up and also how intense the first flare up is. All, all those things, th- there's huge variations. Plus, I, d- I think you can actually have the. The um, you can have herpes and never have a flare up in your life, so you don't even know. That's right. Your body well, apparently, apparently, there's a ton of people have herpes and don't know. What a life, huh? Jesus, three of us could have it and we don't know. Yeah, statistically, I mean, I've been likely tested one for, of us, huh? I've been tested for it, but <laughs> actually, the test, <laughs> the test is very unreliable because uh, it's really the really it, 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 the only way they can 100% test is when you have a, a, a symptom. That you go and you get checked to see if if that yeah. is actually herpes. So so even this girl, she's never been diagnosed with herpes. She went to a doctor and they said, "Listen, there's nothing there." And she goes, "But there was something there a couple of days ago." So he goes, "Well, it might have been herpes." So, oh. but th- like yeah, in hindsight now, I th- I probably did dance a little bit too close to the devil with that one. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you, you know, you 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 could they oh, you only pass it when you're what's the word? There's uh, a word Blake for breaker. No, no, there's a no because you can quarantine. You can no a breakout is one thing, but there's also another time where you're like, uh, the word isn't spraying, but there's a word like that, like a, you, it's it's not a it's not a breakout, but you're actually it's a contagious period. Okay, but I can't remember the name of it. But uh, I'm sick. I've oh. had, I, I had a few very detailed conversations with people who have herpes, and they gave me all the because thi- the thing is that herpes has a, a really bad rep uh, in terms of people think that's the one that you can't get because you. It never goes away, mm. but in actual fact, the, the amount that it affects your life is very small. But the biggest problem is the shame and the disclosure part. And because there's so much shame, according to my friend who has it, she said the problem is that because there's so much shame, people often will not disclose yeah. and hope that you don't get it, rather than deal with the shame of telling you. Like Usher, 
Usher was spreading really? herpes. Yeah, remember Usher? Yeah, do you remember? Yeah, that? But yeah. I didn't know he, had, he was spreading herpes. Yeah, is this, yeah is this, he um, got sued. He got sued. Oh, he got sued? Because apparently he didn't tell people that he had herpes. Even though he knew he had herpes, they got herpes. So can we just say that he was sued? Uh, with, he was accused. Now, what happened accused? with the lawsuit? I don't know. I, I just read the tabloid headlines and then right. moved on with my... Well, well, I'm not CNN here, Dad. Just for the record, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> just, just for the case record, Usher's listening the in. Shift, don't, don't. The Shift podcast is not in any way, shape, or form suggesting that Usher willingly spread herpes, uh, but uh, we do oh. know that he was uh, he was sued uh, based on that accusation. Um, my friend, she has herpes, and she said, you know, she will always disclose. But she, recently, she disclosed it to some guy, and then they had you know, she told him all the stuff, and then they had sex, and then afterwards he texted her multiple, multiple question things like breakdown messages, being like, "Oh, I feel like I might have gotten it," blah, blah, blah. and it was just like so insensitive. And like, look, you got, you had, you know, you can't start texting her all this stuff, but yeah, like that would nearly make her not disclose in the future. Like she will, but like Jesus. Oh, so he wasn't allowed to be freaked out in your mind. Not to her when she's already dis- when she's already told him before they have sex and he's committed to the sex. You cannot then message her being like, "What if I have it?" When she already has it, that's kind of insulting. Oh. Go freak out to your friends. Go freak out to the girl. Well, you, you know what? Maybe she's with. the only person he knows who has herpes, yeah, so he's, he's looking like for he, advice. He's probably com- yeah, he's comfortable talking to her about it. She brought it up. He didn't bring it up. Did it's they have unprotected sex? Uh, no. All right. Yeah, that's a that's bad luck. The, the herpes it seems to be maybe these are just the girls I've talked to, but they always seem to say like, "Oh no!" Like it was like it always seems to be like, "Oh, it's the one time I had sex with like a one night stand," or, or they got it from a guy going down on them. Really? You know things like that. I didn't yeah. know you can get it from a guy going down on you. If he has the yeah, if he has it, it's so complicated because I don't know the genes. You seem to remember better, Des. But like, does the two well, different my, my the two different that, types? The thing that I can't remember oh is can God. you get the non-genital version of herpes on your genitals from oral sex, which yes. I, 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 I don't... I uh, think they can sw- sw- switch and swap all the time, and it's kind of... Oh, no, going down is my so favorite. You can get a, you can yeah, get but don't worry about it, Katie. Thanks. It's, 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 it, it, it's <laughs> not the most... Well, actually, I'm not going to give any statistics on <laughs> on things. People you know just what? need to be careful in general, and you need to, you need to Google uh, various ways that STDs can be transmitted. You can get one of those like uh, those lick out condom things that the guy sort of it's like a little napkin that will go over your really? uh, yeah go over your snatch <laughs> whatever the polite <laughs> term is on this podcast you I put don't the know. napkin on your uh, <laughs> but the <laughs> but the little napkin well the funny thing is that <laughs> it's a little a, square Johnny well, the funny that thing goes is on a previous you. episode on a previous episode somebody claimed that there wasn't a lot of uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, nicknames for for uh, vagina but Not actually pleasant I, ones. I didn't get well this is the thing though. That's a that's a that's a moral judgment. I didn't want to get into it at the time, uh, but in actual fact, there's loads of nicknames for vagina, but they're all considered to be quite negative and demeaning. Even though, <laughs> but but the thing is that they're just words, and then we decide yeah. that they're negative and demeaning. But so what? Snatch, growler, box. Well, I also think she meant though, like in this specific, that all of the slang terms are just for vagina. She meant like there's not a lot of there's only clinical terms for like clit, yeah, clit flap, clit, and l- hole. love nugget. We okay, so there is more love nugget. Yeah, but also, pleasure, Katie, pleasure many, button. But, but how many like for the head of, button? The head of your penis, what is <laughs> bell end? Yeah, I know, but the, the point, like I, you know, mushroom I, head, cock lo- head. There's loads of uh, there's, there's Willy, loads Willy, of Willy dome, Willy dome, penis. I, I, I think <laughs> I think penis is actually the, the scientific term. Yeah, penis penis, penis end called. is it? I love the penis end. <laughs> My little crown. Yeah. Um, oh. So oh, uh, okay. anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. We don't have Do to. Do you know what? I, one ta- you know the way when flaps? I was when is I was younger, we discussed uh, yeah, flaps. We discussed this in the flap, now. Flaps have come up now in a few episodes. I call, labia, yeah. is it? Labia. Labia is the official that's term. It. Wait, can I've I I've never say heard something? that now. Dangly rashes. The v- the g- Katie, rashers. the guys are talking. I know. No. Oh, let me in. What else have you heard um, about flaps? No, though? the for years when I was younger, people would be like, "Oh, I was gay last night," and I was always like, "I never realized until I was older that that just is because you've one eye closed and it's like a vagina, is it?" Boat, well, I tell boat eyes. Vagina eyes, eyes as well it means means you're oh, so, it's so drunk eyes. that your eyes are like. Oh, yeah. see, I, still I don't, I don't think you it. need to read into that too much. I think that's just one of those terms that evolves. I bet you there's as many meanings behind it as as <laughs> there are people that have said it. It's just a fun saying, gi. Yeah, gi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was bollocksed. bollocked. You know. Yes, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. bollocked. A lot of these words evolve. You know. Yeah. So, so how did There's we get onto that herpes thing? Oh, Kate. Um, oh, because Kate. we were talking Kate. about STDs, and he—I knew he had a partner who had her had has herpes. 
And so let's see what she else. She had had herpes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. But then again, like I said, you can get, if if you're worried about a guy, about to go down and you, you get one of those dental dams. Is that what they're called? I'm not gonna do that. So I'll be fine. It's like a little um, latex napkin. You pop it over your 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 lula, or whatever the kids are calling it these days, and he, and he goes to town now. No, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, it doesn't sound great, no. But no, you know, no, like no. I said, if. Maybe one of your listeners no, can write in and let you know how it goes. In the heat of the moment, I'll be like every other person who forgets about their paranoia. And well, fears. that's the whole thing. But that's why, that's why I think maybe you were being a touch harsh on that guy who uh, got a little sort of post-sex well, I just felt paranoia. That, well, I just felt like, I guess, the amount of messages he sent her, and I felt like it was slightly insensitive because it's like, well, she's already given you, and now you're just being like, oh, this is such a terrible thing to get, and I'm so worried, and it's like, well, she, she well, how can she comfort you? And she's like, well, I have it, and you're just saying how horrible it is, you know? So that's where I'm saying, like, there needs to be, I don't know. Well, you know, I, I guess basically my only point on that is that in the heat of passion, you make different decisions. True, and yeah, no, that's a good yeah, point. And, and, and I think that post-sex remorse... Uh, is a common enough occurrence in no, that uh, yeah. you, 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 uh, the, you know, I've I've had unprotected sex in the heat of the moment, and I've afterwards I've freaked out a little bit. No, yeah, no, too. I have yes, done too. yeah, we've all done. Yeah, we've all done it. Yeah, in the heat of the moment, the passion, the body's way of getting pregnant. Huh? I had sex where I didn't not use condom. I used what? condom, and that thing got lost up in me. He, so, didn't, he didn't not wear it. No, he wore it. No, it came it, off. It came There's off. a lot of condom malfunctions. That's common enough. Yeah, Especially in so Ireland, you, huh? So you can even try and protect yourself, and you're like, whoosh, there it's gone. So Life just happens. Exactly. You know? So now, how long have you been in a relationship? year and a half, coming up on two years, I think. Because myself and Katie are both single, you know? Yeah, well, why don't, you, why don't you guys go on a date for the podcast and see how it's that... It's not like that, bro. <laughs> We're men and women can be <laughs> We're friends. We're podcasting I'm partners. Joking. And um, professionals. Yeah, the men and girls you who message me You can't date like, comedians, man. The men no, but I, I was going to say, you. sorry, go ahead, Kay. The men and girls who message me and be like, oh, you get to do the podcast with Des, he's a riot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you tell him that there's not two syllables in ride? Uh, no, riot. but oh, yeah. it's fun. Uh, I was just say. Well, no, um, cause, so now you're a year and a half in a relationship. Mm-hmm. How, how, are you, how are you keeping things fresh? Um, just a bit of advice for because we haven't talked that much about relationship sex. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know what the uh, answer is to keeping things fresh. Well, just sh- share share a story. Like, have you know, uh, have you guys ever sat down and been like, "What else can we try?" Yeah, like, yeah, we've done that now. Oh, you have. I feel like uh, well, that's we've done that recently. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah recently enough. Is she comfortable enough with you sharing this kind of stuff? Well, you know, we, uh, we'll put it out there, you know, <laughs> and then we'll find out afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is this. She is my fucking does what she said. She, what she's told is that what you were going to say? She knew what she she got in. She got involved with the life of an entertainer. Oh right, right yeah. So. so this stuff is out there, mm-hmm. and she loves me. So anyway, so you actually, I so think, you guys did. You guys did bring. You guys said like, you had a little sit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But previously, I don't. I, I don't think she would have been too open to it, you know. But now I, re- I reckon uh, we're, we're together now. A while we live together and things like that, you know. So we're not we're not we're not at it like rabbits anymore. You know what I mean? Yes. You know, that so you, so you got to talk to people and so go. What can we do? Because you know, after yeah, that fa- that that phase has passed. Yeah, and then I think it might have been a little bit slower for her, maybe. What I was saying, too mean, you know what I mean? But now she's at my thing where she's kind of like uh, also going, she's like, this guy's just not doing it for me, you know? That's why she's <laughs> looking at me now. That's why she's changed. So are, are, are you saying that she's she came to a she came to a jaded a jaded position a little bit later than you, but now that she's come to it, you guys have sat down and said, okay, so how are we going to tackle this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then we haven't done anything to yet, but we're just like, say, like, just tame enough stuff. Like, hey, let's watch some, let's watch some porn together. That, that type okay. of stuff. It's just, it's just... We don't have a we don't have a wild nothing wild goes on now between me and my lady. You know, it's all good and fun, but nothing uh, nothing you'd be uh, embarrassed to share, really. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, just, yeah. It's just your regular we're in a love relationship type of stuff. You know, she's American. She's American. Yes, I found myself a visa. <laughs> no, uh, love, love is the four letter word. That's visa. <laughs> but, um, the Irish love yeah, those so jokes when you make those jokes in the States. <laughs> yeah, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got to stay. You know, Trump's going to build that wall. But yeah, so we were just talking about watching porn and 
things like that. So you know, and that's just now. So maybe in a couple of years, we'll we'll bring in some friends or something. Or, or what about sex toys? Um, we've done the cock ring, which I find kind of pointless. Yeah, but it's for her pleasure. So yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> pointless. All right. Um, no, uh, but it's good when the you vibrating come. thing. Yeah, but it's not good when you come. The vibrating thing. I tried it once. I, I it wasn't doing anything. Yeah. The thing is, as soon as you come, just pull it out your arse. And it feels really good. <laughs> oh. There's. You, you know, Wait, it's on your cock? No, it's on your cock. I'm joking. I was, oh, I was making a joke that was up your ass. But actually, yeah, it's on your cock. But it does feel good when you come. For me, anyway, the vibration while you're coming. But other than that, it's just it's just so that it's a vibration on her clit. You get me? Yeah. Do you, does Katie know? No, no, I know. And now I'm going to seem like a liar that I said I never used a sex toy before, but I hadn't. But my ex had bought one of those, but it just didn't work, so we didn't use it. You oh, was like the, the, ba- the thing, it wasn't yeah, vibrating? Yeah, it was like, no, it was just, it wouldn't sit on my clit, so we just kind of got rid of it. Yeah, see, that's the, it's, it's kind of more of a sit-down thing. It, yeah. you, you can't be uh, uh, thrusting or pumping. you got to just be sort of... Right, that's make good. make the things s- snap in there and just sort of let the the machine do the work. Ah, right. right that's so never. So we just got. Yeah, because I, I was with a girl. She brought one and we tried it, but it was just like whatever. This thing. Yeah, I wouldn't even consider it a sex toy. I, I just forgot to look up. I forgot to Google it. I forgot to Google it in advance. How to use a cock ring? Yeah, they're popular enough in Ireland, right? Or we just got one in one of the machines. I, I remember using one when I was a teenager mm. with my girlfriend. So, so, but I think they're kind of like they're kind of a cute thing to buy because you can you'll be in boots or whatever. <laughs> Dwayne weed over here, and you and you can pick up your condoms and then right beside it, just like lube and your and your little cock rings. But you're not gonna be buying like a big fucking rabbit five thousand or whatever <laughs> they use. You know what I mean? Not yeah. in boots, you know. Absolutely. But they do have vibrators in these uh, CVSs and stuff over here. Yeah. But not not at home. No, I've, I've never I, I've never looked in boots for the sex. I don't think they have a sex toy section, do they? No, I don't no. Think the so. Irish like sex section is just like a couple of buckets of lube and some condoms. And yeah. I, I think that's it. You know. Well, I got feedback from a girl saying you can get them in done deal. Done deal. Now, yeah. Why betters? And obviously, no deals. 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 Sorry. What's done deal is a website. Sorry, deals. Deals. Yeah, I saw that. There's a cheap. <laughs> uh, there's uh, a bullet. You can get a bullet and do, and uh, deals. Bullet sounds like a smoothie maker. It it's is just a little mini vibrator. A little mini one. Ooh. Just in case you don't want to come too hard. Because we, we, we have a um, we have a collaboration with sexshopper.ie. Shauna, she's been one of our guests. Oh, great. We're, we're going to have her on on the regular. Yeah. You guys so need to get some sex shop merch. The shift on the side of it. Oh, oh we're going to be yeah. doing all that, bro. Nipple tassels, don't handcuffs. Yeah. The shift handcuffs. That's right. Oh, I bought handcuffs once. First time I went to New York, I bought handcuffs and brought them back with me. Um, But they weren't like metal because obviously I couldn't get them through. Fluffy ones. Yeah, funny ones. Bit of crack. uh, When we get the Patreon going. There's a fucking sex store. Where are we? We're on West Fort now. There's a sex store over there. Just there. It's a a block and a half away. Yeah, I bought some vibrating panties for a girl I was dating once (laughs) and they never fucking worked. Then I went back in and went, these fucking didn't work. (laughs) <laughs> and they're like, well, you gotta go to the manufacturer. And I was like, ah, I'm fucking. The last time I went and bought something. Fun. <laughs> Fun, yeah. No. Lights off, eyes closed. Do you, do you, From now you, on, <laughs> the way God intended, <laughs> no <laughs> machines shall enter. Before we finish up, have you got any other sex toys that you like to uh, introduce into the relationship? Me? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. I'd like, I'd like a rubber dildo, you know, like a floppy one. Mm-hmm. So I can get a good hand around it. And, you know, like a. Like a limp uh, cucumber size type of one, you know. Um, and what do you do with that? I don't know. I I just like that. That would turn me on. Then you sort of put it in and out of your lovely lady. You should get that for you, and since you two are trying to spice stuff up, and you should look at sex shop. At there. least that can't break because there's no batteries around. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to think now. I've changed my sexual uh, <laughs> yeah. things. It's like just what's <laughs> yeah. Now look at that. That lasts you a couple of years though, that one. <laughs> yeah. That's fine value in that one. That is a, such an Irish <laughs> thing. <laughs> Batteries, no. No, they won't give you a refund. Get something solid. Wood. Ten years later, you'll be like, still have it. Only cost me ten euro. Decent. <laughs> Five girlfriends gone through this one. Still going strong. <laughs> you shove a bit of turf up your arse. <laughs> That's what we used to do back in Connemara. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it turned yeah. up the whole... Mm. Yeah, Jesus. fair enough. Jesus. The, co- the old uh, Connemara turf hole. Do you know mm. what um, I... But that's what I'd like to... Uh, moon the hoon. Is that... Yeah. 
<laughs> Sounds like a B and B. Moon the Hoon. It's the arse turf. Um, <laughs> but yeah, well, I, I bring that in. I don't feel like bringing in like a rabbit or something like that. There's something about a solid object. Is that what's it called? Fat, phallid? No. Uh, but and so you. Oh, you mean something that's a bit flaccid? I I, I like a flaccid object to bring in for some reason. So I'd, you so like there's, a something, there's something about a solid vibrating like rabbit that. You know, I wouldn't be, uh, d- wouldn't get me going for some w- reason. It wouldn't be your thing. Yeah, yeah, something. You know what I mean? What would you reckon, Katie? No. Oh, here I'm very. My knowledge on sex toys are very low. Do you want to so plug your? Yeah, plug something. Oh yeah, great. Well, I've got my own podcast that I host with Sean Finnerty, fellow Irish comedian living in New York City. He was recently on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Uh, we just talk about the trials and tribulations of being Irish in New York City. It's called Smack Me Bitch Up, named after the great prodigy song Smack My Bitch Up uh, with the late, great Keith Flint, who just recently Rest passed away. Rest in peace. Yes. Yeah. So, um, sad name this week, but check it out. Smack Me Bitch Up across all social media platforms and podcasting hosting places. What's your Instagram? Yeah. At Colum Tyrrell across all social media platforms. Are you C O L M or C O L U M? Yeah, you're the U. You're the U. I'm okay. the U M. Yeah. That's good to know. Important for the 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 people to know. Well, thank you so much. I mean, you just we kind of hit this. We sort of threw this at you on on short notice, but no, we haven't great. had a lot. We haven't had a lot of guys on the podcast, so I was. No, it was, I was great. I was, Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. You know, I was I was conscious to to, to any, change up the energy. You know. Yeah. Anytime I get to talk. Uh, with some fellow Irish people in this crazy city, it's always fun. Yeah. Hey, actually, just just while we're just before we shut it down, since your podcast is about being Irish in New York, mm. ha- has anything around this topic ever come up between you and your your partner? As in sex and dating? Yeah, just curious. You know, just tr- to being Irish in New- in New York. Did any of this stuff pop up? Um, or is it more just? Yeah, sometimes, yeah, it's normally just stories about what's going on in the news and the week and, and oh, stuff. Right. To be honest, we're like we're, we're like forty five episodes in, and so you've like, you've exhausted all the all the fish out of water stuff, have you? Yeah, we've done a lot of that, and now it's more about what's going on in the news. You have a lot of stories for the first twenty episodes. Then you're going, did Trump say something? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we're, we're going to encounter that. Yeah, suddenly you're not going to be gone. The sex you know, story I mean, of I've the week. Or- <laughs> I've already used up like 25 of the women I fucked, but thank God I got like another <laughs> 250 to go. Legend. Uh, I gotta so. go fuck more. <laughs> <laughs> You've been dragging the two guys out now for like fucking 12 episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Katie, <laughs> Katie finishes her sets being like, look, I'm running out of shit to say in a podcast. Who wants to, who wants to, who wants to go down on me with a napkin? <laughs> <laughs> Available outside at well, the no, bar. The, well, not the right. brown fucking Dunkin' Donut napkins. There you go. That's well, a loop. Well done, team. Thanks, Colm. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Thank you to Colm. Thanks to Katie. And thanks to you, the listener. Um, we've got some wonderful feedback from you guys so far. Our next episode, actually, we share quite a bit of feedback about questions we put out on Instagram about sex toys, sex toy stories. And then obviously some people, after they listened to last week's episode, shared some stories. So myself and Katie chat about that. Um, uh, the next episode, Katie also uh, makes an amendment to her review, and uh, we talk a little bit further about that. Um, we got some great episodes coming up, uh, so stay tuned. We have a new email: contact the shift at gmail dot com. Contact the shift at gmail dot com. We figured some people might prefer uh, a touch more anonymity. Maybe they don't want us knowing their Instagram. So send us uh, any feedback, any questions, anything you want us to talk about. We are looking for stories about in, uh, experiences anyone may have had with like gameplay, uh, uh, guys, or men or women playing games in the early part of a relationship, what those games were. Are you somebody that thinks it's a good idea to play games, play it cool at the start, uh, not show too much interest? Basically, any sort of schemes and scams you have for uh, relationships, uh, the the courting process, the wooing process before your guys are official, quote unquote, anything like that, please share with us. Contact the shift at gmail.com or of course you can uh, Instagram me at Des Bishop 
or Instagram Katie, Katie Boyle Comic. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll share that feedback. Um, other than that, please subscribe wherever you listen. Five stars on iTunes. Uh, give us plenty of, rev- uh, plenty of reviews. Um, it's been fun. We've been up in the top ten a few times. We got as high as number two. But, you know, as the podcast goes on, it's easy to slip away in the charts. Uh, so that's why uh, the reviews, the stars, and subscribing helps that helps more people find out about the podcast please spread the word tell everybody you know uh that there's something fun going on here at the shift and i thank you so much i'm in limerick on saturday i'm in killarney on fridays told sold out but i'm in limerick on saturday not sold out some tickets left and then i'm in galway the following weekend check that out katie uh is in san francisco at the moment doing a, a comedy festival um So if you're in San Francisco, go check that out. Anyway, guys, I better go. It's like quite late here. I'm very jet lagged. I just got back from New York and I'm starting to waffle. So thank you guys. See you soon.